Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And here we are, our new series ServiceNow CAD exam preparation. And this is the part one, which will contain 10 questions, which I'm gonna discuss with you with all the answers, right? Uh, so that you can practice it. So in this way, I'm gonna cover total 90 questions, right? 60 questions should be for the members. So from part four, to part 7, part 4, part 5, part 6, part 7. That would be only for the members and part 1, part 2, part 3 will be for the everyone, for all the audience, right? Like part 1, part 2 and part 3 will also contain uh, 10 questions, right? So each and everything I have already discussed in detail in this video, guys. So make sure you watch the video. So all the information related to this series, ServiceNow CAD exam preparation I have already provided in this video. And also here I have uh, shared you with the latest syllabus okay and how my uh, service now development playlist which is this one uh, is covering all of the videos and what are the things that uh, is going to come each and everything I've discussed so make sure you watch the video before starting this one all right so let's get into it uh, you know already how I'm gonna do it already you have seen in the my CSA playlist right so let's get into it and let's get to the first question of the CAD exam preparation series Okay, so which method is used to retrieve application property values in a script? Okay, so by using which method we can get the application property values. So uh, we have the first option gs.get property, g underscore form dot get app property, uh, g underscore form dot get property and gs dot get app property. So first of all, this two g underscore form things won't uh, won't be the right answer because this is a server side method, right? So for that we need to use the uh, gs, right? So either gs dot get property or gs dot get app property. So we don't have any function like that get app property. So I have used many times in my script include also I've shown you how you can store a uh, different value in this is properties table and then you can access it using gs.get property. So this is the right answer. So let's move into the question number two. So which one of the following is part of client side scripting API? Okay, client side and server side we have already discussed. So workflow.scratchpad, glide user object, which is the g underscore user, uh, current and previous objects, or the glide system object. So again, we are discussing about the client side, not the server side. So definitely this uh, current and previous object glide system, this won't be the right answer. Also workflow.scratchpad we don't use in the client side. So glide user is definitely g underscore user we use in the client side. So this is the right answer. Let's move to the question number three. Which of the following methods is not part of the service now REST API? So guys, before I get into it, just remember this not is very very important one okay so I've seen many people who miss this thing uh, in the exam so they get confused so they just ignore that part not so it is mentioned in the capital you can see so which of the following method is not part of the service now rest API we have copy post uh, get delete so again this thing I have discussed in my integration video so copy is not a method of service now we know about the post uh, to create a new record get record we use get to delete we use delete but there is no concept of copy okay so the right answer is copy because the question is asked for following method is not part of the service now rest api so copy is not part of it okay so let's go to the question number four what we do to see what scripts reports and other application artifacts will be in a published application. Enter the name of the application in the global search field. Open the list of update sets for the instance. Examine the application files related list in the application to be published or open the artifacts record individually to verify the value in the application field. So again, if we read the question, so what we do to see what scripts, reports and other application artifacts will be in a published application. So you know that whatever you do changes in the script reports or any other application configuration you are doing business rule, everything gets stored in the update set, right? And if you open the update set, you'd be able to see what are the different scripts, reports and other applications uh, that you have used, right? So you know these things I have also shown many times. So the correct answer would be B, open the list of update set for the instance to see all these records. Okay, so let's move to the question number five. Which server side object provides methods for working with debts uh, when writing a script in a privately scoped application? Okay, so what is the method that we use to uh, work with the dates in the scripting, right? So glide date time, we have current, 
glide record and glide system current represent the uh, current record right we have the glide record that we use for the database query glide system uh, we have so many purpose of glide system actually but glide date time is it it is the right one uh, to deal with the dates right also i have shown this in my custom application uh, videos so if you have any confusion make sure you watch that okay so the right answer is glide date time so let's move to the question number six when creating new application files in a scoped application cross scope access is turned on by default in which of the following cross scope access means that of uh, suppose in the uh, in, the, in you have created a custom application and you are trying to access a table which is not in your scope so it's like you are trying to access the incident table right uh, which is in the global scope okay so that is the cross scope access so the question is again when creating new application files in a scoped application cross scope application scro cross scope access is turned on by default in which of the following for which it is turned on default for rest message for table for script include for workflow so again, I have given the example with the incident table so you can understand the right answer would be table. You can access the incident table, for an example, using the cross scope access, but you won't be able to do any changes or modify anything, right? You can access it. So you have seen when I uh, when I was creating our custom application, I extended the task table, right? But the task table is in the global scope and I was working in a custom scope, right? So because of this cross scope access, I was able to uh, access the table. Okay, so that's the answer table. So let's move to the question number seven. On a form, which type of field has this icon which can be clicked to see a preview of the associated record? Okay, if we click the icon, the associated record gets come up. We have the reference, we have the lookup, we have the preview and we have the quick view. Okay, one more option we have the drill down. So let's quickly check that. So this is the incident field and if we want to see, uh, you know, so preview of the associated record. So suppose if I choose any color, Abel Tutor, so you can see, we can see the preview of the associated record in a reference field. Okay, uh, we have also one option for snapshot. So we totally have six option and the right answer would be reference. So let's go to the question number eight. Which one of the following is true for this line of code? G underscore user has role uh, and then we have the role name. So it should not be a comma, it should be a, you know, a quote like this, okay. Uh, but the question is understood, I guess. So which one is true for this line of code? So we have used that, you know, right? What is the meaning of that? So first, the method returns true if the currently logged in user has the x underscore my underscore app underscore user role or the admin role. Number two, the method returns false only if the current logged in user has the, uh, this role this role there is no g underscore user dot hash role has role method the method returns true only if the currently logged in user has the uh, this role so for g underscore user dot has role it checks the role name which is if it is present to the users right or if the user has having the admin uh, role then it returns true in both the cases either the mentioned role in the bracket which is there like this role or user is having the admin role then it returns true which we can see in the first option. The method returns true if the currently logged in user has the x underscore my underscore app underscore user this role or the admin role. Both the cases it will return true. So this would be the right answer. Okay, so let's move to the question number nine. What is the name of the string that displays in the filter criteria? Okay, we have the breadcrumb, choice, menu, topic. Again, if I go back to the incident.list. So if I go to the filter criteria, right, I have to go to the list view to see the filter criteria. So if I open the filter criteria and uh, if I just put something active is true and if I click on run, so this is the section is called the breadcrumb, right? Again, I have discussed it in my ServiceNow uh, system administrator playlist. Uh, the question is a little bit tricky which is a string displays in the filter criteria. So this is a filter criteria we use. Okay. And this is a string display. So the right answer is breadcrumb. So let's get into the last question of this video. Okay. What do you click when you have made modifications to your report and you want to see the results without saving it without saving the result? You want to see the output execute. You click preview, you click run, 
you click test or you click try it okay so we use run button right to see what is the uh, result is coming without saving the report if something is coming which is uh, which we don't want we can just change it then and then we can save it finally so the right answer would be run this is it for the part one guys so this is just the 10 question we have covered so see you in my next part when i'll be covering 10 more questions which would be important for the cad exam preparation bye bye see you in my next video